one of the industries that benefited tremendously from scale, and you, know, you all know this one very well, large language models. Basically, after the transformer was invented, we were able to scale large language models at incredible rates, effectively doubling every six months. Now, how is it possible that by doubling every six months, that we have grown the industry, we have grown the computational requirements so far? And the reason for that is quite simply this. If you double the size of the model, you double the size of your brain, you need twice as much information to go fill it. And so every time you double your parameter count, you also have to appropriately increase your training token count. The combination of those two numbers becomes the computation scale you have to support. The latest, the state-of-the-art OpenAI model is approximately 1.8 trillion parameters. 1.8 trillion parameters required several trillion tokens to go train. So a few trillion parameters on the order of, a few trillion tokens on the order of, when you multiply the two of them together, approximately 30, 40, 50 billion, quadrillion floating-point operations per second. Now, we just have to do some CO math right now. Just hang, hang with me. So you have 30 billion quadrillion. A quadrillion is like a peta. And so if you had a petaflop GPU, you would need 30 billion seconds to go compute, to go train that model. 30 billion seconds is approximately 1,000 years. And here we are as we see the miracle of ChatGPT emerge in front of us, we also realize we have a long ways to go. We need even larger models. We're going to train it with multimodality data, not just text on the internet, but we're going, to, we're going to train it on text and images and graphs and charts. And just as we learn, watching TV. And so there's going to be a whole bunch of watching video so that these mo models can be grounded in physics, understands that an arm doesn't go through a wall. And so these models would have common sense by watching a lot of the world's video combined with a lot of the world's languages. They'll use things like synthetic ge data generation, just as you and I do. When we try to learn, we might use our imagination to simulate how it's going to end up, just as I did when I was preparing for this keynote. I was simulating it all along the way. We're sitting here using synthetic data generation. We're going to use reinforcement learning. We're going to practice it in our mind. We're going to have AI working with AI, training each other, just like student, teacher, debaters. All of that is going to increase the size of our model. It's going to increase the amount of, con the amount of data that we have. And we're going to have to build even bigger GPUs. Hopper is fantastic, but we need bigger GPUs. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce you to a very, very big GPU. <laughs> Named after David Blackwell. Blackwell is not a chip. Blackwell is the name of a platform. Uh, people think we make GPUs, and, and we do. But GPUs don't look the way they used to. Uh, here, here's the, here's, the, here's the, 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 if you will, the heart of the Blackwell system. And this inside the company is not called Blackwell, it's just a number. And um, uh, this, this is Blackwell sitting next to, oh, this is the most advanced GPU in the world in production today. This is Hopper. This is Hopper. Hopper changed the world. This is Blackwell. It's OK, Hopper. You're, you're very good. Good, good boy. Well, good girl. 208 billion transistors, and so, so you could see, you, it, it, I can see, 
there, there's a small line between two dyes. This is the first time two dyes have abutted like this together in such a way that the two, chip, the two dyes think it's one chip. There's 10 terabytes of data between it, 10 terabytes per second, so that these two, these two sides of the Blackwell chip have no clue which side they're on. There's no memory locality issues, no cache issues. It's just one giant chip. And so uh, when we were told that Blackwell's ambitions were beyond the limits of physics, uh, the engineer said, so what? And so this is what, what happened. And so this is the Blackwell chip, and it goes into two types of systems. The first one is form-fit function compatible to Hopper. And so you slide on Hopper and you push in Blackwell. That's the reason why one of the challenges of ramping is going to be so efficient. There are installations of Hoppers all over the world, and they could be, they could be you know, the same infrastructure, same design, the power, the electricity, the thermals, the software, identical, push it right back. And so this is a Hopper version for the current HGX configuration. And this is what the, other, the second Hopper looks like this. Now this is a prototype board, and um, Janine, could I just borrow? Ladies and gentlemen, Janine Paul. And so this, this, is the, this is a fully functioning board, and I'll, I'll just be careful here. This right here is, I don't know, $10 billion. <laughs> the second one's five. It gets cheaper after that, so any customers in the audience, it's okay. <laughs> All right, but this, is, this one's quite expensive. This is the bring up board. And, um, uh, and the, the way it's gonna go to production is like this one here, okay? And so you're gonna take, take this. It has two Blackwell, die, two, two Blackwell chips and four Blackwell dies connected to a Grace CPU. The Grace CPU has a super fast chip-to-chip -chip link. What's amazing is this computer is the first of its kind where this much computation first of all, fits into this small of a place. Second, it's memory coherent. They feel like they're just one big happy family working on one application together. And so everything is coherent within it. Um, the, just the amount of, you know, you saw the numbers. There's a lot of terabytes this and terabytes that. Um, but this is, this is a miracle. This is a, a this. Let's see, what are some of the things on here? Uh, there's... Um, uh, uh, NVLink on top, PCI Express on the bottom, on, on uh, your, which one is my and your left? One of them, it doesn't matter. Uh, one, of the, one of them is a C, CPU chip-to-chip -chip link. It's my left or your, depending on which side. I was just I was trying to sort that out and I just kind of, doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully it comes plugged in, so. <clears throat> okay, so this is the Grace Blackwell system. If you were to train a GPT model, 1.8 trillion parameter model, it took, it took about, apparently about, you know, three to five months or so uh, with 25,000 amperes. Uh, if we were to do it with Hopper, it would probably take something like 8,000 GPUs and it would consume 15 megawatts, 8,000 GPUs and 15 megawatts. It would take 90 days, about three months. And that would allow you to train something that is, you know, this groundbreaking AI model. And this is obviously not as expensive as, as, um, uh, as anybody would think, but it's 8,000 8, GPUs. It's still a lot of money. And so 8,000 GPUs, 15 megawatts. If you were to use Blackwell to do this, it would only take 2,000 GPUs. 2,000 GPUs, same 90 days, but this is the amazing part. Only four megawatts of power. So from 15, yeah, that's right. And that's, and that's our goal. Our goal is to continuously drive down the cost and the energy. They're directly proportional to each other, cost and energy. 
associated with the computing so that we can continue to expand and scale up the computation that we have to do to train the next generation models. Well, this is training. Inference or generation is vitally important going forward. You know, probably some half of the time that NVIDIA GPUs are in the cloud these days, it's being used for token generation. You know, they're either doing Copilot this or Chat, you know, chat GPT that or um, all these different models that are being used when you're interacting with it or generating, Im generating images or generating videos, generating proteins, generating chemicals. There's a bunch of genera generation going on. All of that is ba in the category of computing we call inference. But inference is extremely hard for large language models because these large language models have several properties. One, they're very large. And so it doesn't fit on one GPU. So now that you understand the basics, let's take a look at inference of Blackwell compared to Hopper. And this is, this is the extraordinary thing. In one generation, because we created a system that's designed for trillion parameter gener generative AI, the inference capability of Blackwell is off the charts. And in fact, it is some 30 times Hopper. Yeah. For large language models, for large language models like ChatGPT and others like it, the blue line is Hopper. I gave you, imagine we didn't change the architecture of Hopper, we just made it a bigger chip. We just used the latest, you know, greatest uh, 10 ter you know, terabytes per second. We connected the two chips together. We got this giant 208 billion parameter chip. How would we have performed if nothing else changed? And it turns out quite wonderfully, quite wonderfully, and that's the purple line, but not as great as it could be. And that's where the FP4 Tensor Core, the new transformer engine, and very importantly, the NVLink switch. And the reason for that is because all these GPUs have to share the results, partial products. Whenever they do all to all, all, all gather, whenever they communicate with each other, that NVLink switch is communicating almost 10 times faster than what we could do in the past using the fastest networks. Okay, so. Blackwell is going to be just an amazing system for a generative AI. And in the future, in the future, data centers are going to be thought of, as I mentioned earlier, as an AI factory. An AI factory's goal in life is to generate revenues, generate, in this case, intelligence in this facility, not generating electricity, as in AC generators, but of the last industrial revolution and this industrial revolution, the generation of intelligence. It's not enough for humans to imagine. We have to invent and explore and push beyond what's been done. This is where inspiration leads us. The next frontier. This is NVIDIA Project Groot. With these tools, we can train Groot in physically-based simulation and transfer zero shot to the real world. The Groot model will... We're providing the building blocks for the next generation of AI-powered robotics.